Croatia is a great footballing country. Everyone knows it at this point, and I don't think anyone's going to try to fight me on that. I've always liked Croatia's national team, although I am Bosnian, yes. It's difficult not to be impressed and inspired by their recent performances. I talked about the Croatian national team's history in this video, you should have like a little pop-up thing there. It should be in the description as well if I bother to put it in, it's a great video, you should check it out. However, I didn't really shine enough light on the Nations League, because it's the Nations League, which is kind of stupid considering that they were in the semi-finals at that point and I should have known to, you know, shine more light on it. However, I didn't and that is on me. However, now that Croatia has placed itself into the final on the 18th where they will be playing Spain, I think it's time to cover their Nations League journey. Before we begin, you you know the drill, you know, like, subscribe, comment, tell your wife you love her, uh, and enough e-begging, let's get into the actual video. Croatia was placed in a very difficult group, with 2018 World Cup winners and 2022 finalists France, a tricky Denmark team and Austria, so they were marked to go second place at best. Honestly, if Denmark's on their A game, they could even potentially end up third. Uh, their start wasn't amazing, as on the 3rd of June in Osijek, they would lose 3-0 to Austria, which was arguably the weakest team in their group. Uh, this was that international break where they had like four games in like a period of like two weeks, which is crazy. So only three days later, uh, their heads would not be lost as in split in the Polit Stadium. They gathered a point against France in a 1-1 draw. On the 10th of the same month, Croatia would manage their first win of the tournament in a tight 1-0 but well-earned victory over Denmark in Copenhagen. To wrap up their impressive international break, only a few days later, they would finish it with a shocking 1-0 victory over France in the Stade de France Stadium through Luka Modric. International break was mixed, however, to no one's surprise, Croatia did end up topping the group at that point. France were having a bit of a nightmare, uh, and Denmark was hot on Croatia's tail, nonetheless. That 3-0 no loss against Austria, definitely not what they needed at that point. The team would once again return in late September to play Denmark again in a very key fixture that was a big part in deciding who could actually top the group. Croatia would be the first team to take the lead as the young left back Borna Sosa from Stuttgart opened the scoring making it 1-0 for the Croatians. The man who won the Gulag Christian Eriksen from Manchester United would equalize in the 77th minute, however their celebrations wouldn't last very long as only two minutes later in the 79th minute Lovra Mayer would make it 2-1 for Croatia. The great support that they had in Zagreb would help them keep their composure and in the end they'd come away with an arrow but deserved 2-1 victory over the Danes. In their final match Croatia was playing against Austria while France was playing against Denmark. Uh, this was going to be deciding however all Croatia needed was a win and I mean Denmark were already probably going to lose their game right? Denmark absolutely pummeled France. They won 2-0 with you know shocking ease. Uh, however, Croatia, they won their game 3-1 uh, and in the end got top spot with 13 points, which was only one more than what Denmark had. Uh, as you probably noticed, France had a fucking nightmare. However, they still ended up third and Austria was last. You know, slightly disappointing. Uh, if you're Austria, you're, you're screaming, but it is what it is. The other winners of their respective Nations League A groups were the Netherlands, Spain and Italy. Basically, what would happen after that is that the winners would be facing off in semi-final matches where, you know, they would be paired up and all that stuff. Uh, there would be a third place playoff for the losers of the semi-finals, and of course, you'd have the final as well. Uh, Croatia would be paired up against the Netherlands, which wasn't great as the Netherlands had the home advantage, uh, while Spain was facing off against Italy. It took a long while for us to get here, but on the 14th of June, only a few days ago, Croatia would finally return against the Netherlands, and we would see an incredible matchup. And of course, like I said, I use this word almost every fucking video. Can't do it justice. Check out the highlights because UEFA just doesn't let me show you them. Uh, so I recommend just, you know, checking them out for yourself. However, I can try, and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, let's go. The first half started and although it looked like it was going to just end up calmly and finish nil-nil, in the 34th minute, Daniel Malen would be the goal scorer to take the Dutch into a 1-0 lead. Somewhat early in the second half, uh, they, Croatia would get a penalty and although you'd expect Luka Modric to step up to take it, it was actually Andrei Kramaric who would step up and slot it in calmly. 
Uh, not too long after that, in the 72nd minute, Croatia would take the lead through Mario Pašalic, who, like I said, is the clutch master. You would know if you saw the most recent Euros. It was all coming to a close. Livakovic even got booked because he was time-wasting. However, in the 96th minute, Noah Lang would score. And I'm going to be that honest with you. I didn't know who this man was before this match and before this goal. Is that poor ball knowledge or, uh, or is anyone else having the same situation or had the same situation? Because I swear to God, I did not know this guy existed. This would send the teams to extra time. However, like I said, Croatia performs at their best after the 90th minute mark. So Bruno Petkovic slotting it in the 98th gave him the lead. And Luka Modric in the 116th would top it all off with a cool penalty. Croatia, like I said, I'll be the first to tell you. I really thought they weren't going to win this. I think Netherlands just had too much going for them. I thought Croatia just wasn't on it anymore. However, like I said, I'm more than happy to say that I've been proven wrong and Croatia won with ease. Ease is a strong word. They definitely won it with more ease than they probably sh had any right to, but that's just how Croatia does. They just they just keep winning games. In the other matchup, we won't cover this one as much. Uh, Spain beat Italy. Yosselu scored a very late goal to uh, win Spain the match 2-1. And like I said, they will be facing off against each other on the 18th. Uh, we will also see a third place playoff on the same date uh, with the Netherlands playing Italy. Uh, how disappointing is that Italy has been in like 20 finals this year and has won none. That's including like the under 20s World Cup, which they also lost in the final to Uruguay. Just something, just food for thought. I think it would be very nice to see Luka Modric crown his, I think, a very impressive international career. One of the best, I think, in the history of football with a trophy it would be a real shame for him to just go home without winning a single thing with Croatia I think that'd be extremely disappointing for the size of the country two 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 third place medals and one second place medal is obviously amazing however at this point Croatia just can only aim upwards and well the Nations League would be a great start winning that would be absolutely huge for them yeah there was a comment back on that video that I earlier mentioned that covers the Croatia's like history of football uh, that was actually quite negative, and I'm going to read it out to you. Uh, I retract my statement. It's much longer than I thought it was. It. I'll show you the comment on screen. Uh, it got six likes, 33 replies, which is, you know, not the thing you want to hear. Uh, but I, I want to cover it just a little bit. You can leave at this point if you don't care. However, I have a lot to say. The points that were main here is that outside of Yoshko Vario, they don't really have any new players. The older players can't play good forever. You know, and that in 2026, uh, this man believes that Croatia will fail disastrously, which is the key word, disastrously. Uh, my first point was very short. All I recent, all I kind of said was just like, hey, they said this before, and Croatia still performed. And I still stand by that. I still backed the youngsters. I mentioned people like Sosa and Mayer and Susic and Stanisic and all those guys and Shrutalo. Uh, and I said that they'll actually do average in upcoming tourneys. That is actually the only thing I'd like to take back from my entire spiel here. Uh, no, they won't do average in the upcoming tourneys. They're going to continue uh, killing it. Clearly, they are going to. I don't know how many times Chris is going to need to win big games before people start to finally give them credit. Uh, partly in the comments became a bit of a political rant about Tito and stuff, which is, you know, I mean, it's the risk that you take every time you fucking make a video on these messed up ends. However, everyone kind of basically told this guy, yeah, yeah, nah, mate, it's Croatia's good. Croatia's pretty good. They're going to continue being good, which I'm not really against. I think they, I think that they have a point. I think Croatia's just got too much going for them right now for them to stop being good anytime soon. Sure, you can make predictions about 2026, but I mean, that's three years ahead of from now. You don't know what could happen. Injuries could come up all over the place. For all I know, uh, Mateo Kovacic might just break his feet forever. You never know. It's also weird to me because Croatia, like, they're pretty consistent with, like, their big clubs. They they, they they make players. People like, I don't know, like Shutalo and, like, Sucic. They they came from Dinamo Zagreb. A lot of these players came from Dinamo Zagreb. Even though they were born outside of, like, Croatia, Croatia's biggest club would buy them and develop them to play for Croatia. I mean, I'm mentioning Dinamo Zagreb here, but Hajduk Split have done the same before. There's still some other clubs that are, like I said, very solid in creating great players. So I don't really see the point here. And like I said, it's difficult to try and even agree with this when it's something people have been saying for like, basically forever. However, like I said, 
three medals and a Nations League final, which means I, which is another guaranteed fourth medal. Uh, we're just gonna see if they're gonna get a trophy instead of a medal. Uh, that's about it, really. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe, uh, all that funny business. And yeah, back to footballing content. Uh, the last video flopped. So yeah, um, it's not great, uh, but it is what it is. We keep moving. Uh, if you want to see more fun stuff, you, they're probably, it's probably on the screen. Uh, if I remember to put it in. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you uh, sometime soon. Hopefully.